Welcome to a quick overview of planning for your MyCurator installation. A few minutes up front will make for a quick and easy setup. Millions of articles are added to the web each day, so how does MyCurator help you find just a few of the best for your blog? First, MyCurator reads the web just like you do, but it uses feeds and alerts rather than a browser. We call these sources and they provide the raw stream of articles from across the web. Second, you tell my curator what articles to look for. We call these topics and they are used to train my curator to find what you are looking for. As my curator reads the web, it finds articles that match your topics and it places them on your training page. The training page is a private page only you can see and it is the source of the articles you're going to curate to your blog. You can train my curator telling it which articles you like or don't like and it will weed out a lot of the junk that you get in the feed or alert. Finally, you can curate one of the articles to your live blog with access to the full text and images right on the inside the word editor. To make all this happen takes a little planning and setup. The first step is decide which categories on your blog are going to hold the content curated from my curator. In our example, we are blogging about pies. How can you go wrong with that? You can create these categories now, or they may already be there. It's up to you and your theme whether these show up as menu items or just whether you're in your normal blog page. Each category on your blog that is to hold articles from My Curator must have a corresponding topic. Topics let my, tell My Curator what to look for when it's reading articles throughout the day. It doesn't hurt to make the topic names similar to the category names. Sources tell my curator what to read for each topic. We use the WordPress links pages for sources. You need at least one link category or source for each topic. You want to create your link categories first so that when you add actual feeds as link entries, you can assign them to the appropriate link category. Again, it's fine that their names mirror the topic you expect them to be used with. Now you can plan which actual alerts and feeds are going to be used for each link category. You can have as many feeds and alerts per category as you like. You can use the news or Twitter menu item under links to create Google news feed or Twitter searches that are automatically posted as links. We've planned out the installation from the live blog all the way back to the feeds. It turns out that it's best to enter the information the opposite way. Enter the link categories then enter links, then create topics, and you can create new categories with the topics. So you plan from the live blog back, but then enter from sources to topics. The training videos are built to be watched this way too. A final note, if you are planning for a lot of topics, you can actually be more creative in using your sources. You can have two link category sources used by one topic. You could also have a feed be a part of multiple link category sources. In reusing categories and feeds, you may find duplicate articles. My curator only checks for duplicates within a topic, so an article could be appropriate for two topics and show up twice in the training page. Next step is to review our sources and topic videos. Thanks.